الذين آمنوا وتطمئن قلوبهم بذكر الله ألا بذكر الله تطمئن القلوب السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى آله وأصحابه أجمعين My brothers and sisters, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reminds us to think of the reaction of actions we actually do. So when you do something, Allah is saying, hang on, before you do it, think of what's going to happen as a result of what you are going to do. When you do this, you will achieve contentment. Remember. So sometimes people tend to swear others. If you swear someone, they may swear you back. They may swear your mother, your father. They will swear everyone. And you know what? The root of it was you. What type of contentment would you like when you were the root of a huge problem because you didn't think before you acted or before you said something? So if you'd like contentment, always think deeply before you do something, before you say something, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will protect you. If you look at verse number 108 of Surah Al-An'am, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala speaks about insulting those who are calling out to gods besides Allah. To insult them. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, don't do that. You might argue, astaghfirullah, a person who's weak might think or might ask a question, saying, you know what, why should I not insult them when they're calling out to gods besides Allah? Allah says, well, they will then insult Allah without knowledge. And guess who would have been the cause? You would have caused it because you didn't think. What did you gain by insulting them? What did you gain by swearing them? Nothing. In fact, you shifted them and drifted them further away from Allah. They did not used to insult Allah. Now they're insulting Allah because of you. What type of contentment would you like? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in this verse, verse number 108 of Surah Al-An'am, وَلَا تَسُبُّوا الَّذِينَ يَدْعُونَ مِن دُونِ اللَّهِ فَيَسُبُّوا اللَّهَ عَدْوًا بِغَيْرِ عِلْمٍ Don't insult those who are calling out to gods besides Allah because then they will insult Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala without knowledge. So my brothers and sisters, I hope that this verse can inspire us to achieve contentment through being concerned about the reactions of our words and our actions before we say anything and before we act. Amazing. It's very deep. But if you're prepared to do this, you will definitely achieve contentment. You'll protect yourself from the loss of sleep. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us goodness. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala always tells us to follow what is right, whether the whole world is saying something else. So even if the whole world is engaged in something that's bad, bad will remain bad. It doesn't make it good. And if the whole world is shunning good, good will remain good. It doesn't make it bad just because the whole world doesn't look at it as good. So this is why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, verse number 116 of Surah Al-An'am, وَإِن تُطِعْ أَكْثَرَ مَنْ فِي الْأَرْضِ يُضِلُّكَ عَنْ سَبِيلِ اللَّهِ If you were to follow the majority on earth, they perhaps would lead you astray, away from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Not always is what is right with the majority. Remember that. So uh, it's got to do with following what is correct and what you know is upright. Not necessarily what is what the whole world is doing. If the whole world was doing something wrong, it is still wrong in the eyes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. May Allah grant us goodness and may Allah open our doors. Ameen. Again, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala speaks about consumption and making sure that you eat that which is halal. Imagine Allah is saying it again and again. Here in verse number 121 of Surah Al-An'am, Allah tells us, وَلَا تَأْكُلُوا مِمَّا لَمْ يُذْكَرِ اسْمُ اللَّهِ عَلَيْهِ وَإِنَّهُ لَفِسْقًا And don't consume that which the name of Allah has not been mentioned upon. When it was being slaughtered, the name of Allah was not mentioned. Allah says don't consume that because it is sinful. It is not clean. When you are concerned about what goes into your mouth, the energy that you will get by that particular food will be used in the right direction. It will bring about contentment and happiness because you did the right thing. But when you're not bothered about what goes into your mouth, how do you expect what comes out of your mouth to be good, to be filled with words of 
goodness and so on, how do you expect the energy that's going to be created and generated by that consumption of whatever evil you've eaten to be correct energy that is channeling you in the right way? No, you want contentment, you must make sure that you consume that which the name of Allah has been mentioned upon. We move on to Surah Al-A'raf, a powerful, beautiful surah. And I'm going to spend a little bit of time speaking about how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala addresses the issue of the creation of man and the tampering of the devil with man. Remember, shaitan is an outright enemy. Iblis has always sworn that he, he will lead us astray because he was jealous. Never become jealous of another. My brothers and sisters, if you do that, perhaps you will lose contentment. And if you do that, it will be a lifelong misery that you've entered into because jealousy has no ending. If it's about one person, it will continue. It will become such that you will become jealous of so many other people. Take it out. Be happy with what Allah has blessed others with, whether it is status, whether it is knowledge, whether it is authority, whether it is good looks, whatever else it may be, success in this world, whatever it may be, be happy for others and Allah will grant you contentment. Yes, you may pray that Allah give you something similar, but don't ever pray that Allah take it away from them to give it to you because that will not happen. Allah gives people whatever He has apportioned for them. He's not going to take from one to give another, but He has enough to be giving everyone. May Allah grant us goodness. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says very clearly that Adam alayhi salam, when he was created, Shaitan led him astray. We spoke about the issue of jealousy. And thereafter, he made a mistake. Who? Adam alayhi salam made a mistake. Hawa, Eve, may peace be upon them both. They made a mistake. As soon as they made a mistake, they said something. They turned to Allah. So when you make a mistake, turn to Allah. You'll achieve contentment. But if you make a mistake and you don't recollect and you don't turn to Allah, how do you expect to gain that contentment? You know, sin brings about temporary pleasure, but it sows the seed of discontent for a long time. It sows the seed of long-term distance from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So don't engage in sin in a way that you don't turn back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So my brothers and sisters, Allah says these words were so beloved unto Allah. Let's listen to them. قَالَا رَبَّنَا ظَلَمْنَا أَنفُسَنَا وَإِن لَمْ تَغْفِرْ لَنَا وَتَرْحَمْنَا لَنَكُونَنَّ مِنَ الْخَاسِرِينَ The two of them said, O oh our Lord, we have wronged ourselves. And if you don't have mercy on us, and if you don't forgive us, we will be the losers. So we are asking for your forgiveness. We are asking you to have mercy on us. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgave them as a result. That was verse number 23 of Surah Al-A'raf. Allah forgave them. Allah sent them onto the earth. My brothers and sisters, remember, when you seek the forgiveness of Allah, when you call out to Him, asking Him to have mercy on you, you will achieve His mercy. And part of that mercy is contentment. Let's be honest. How many of us have asked Allah, O oh Allah, give me contentment. O oh Allah, grant me contentment. O oh Allah, make me happy. O oh Allah, show me your mercy. O oh Allah, have mercy upon me. And so on. Remember to keep asking this on a daily basis. You ask Allah and Allah will definitely have mercy on you. Never lose hope in the mercy of Allah. Never underestimate the value of calling out to Allah, the remembrance of Allah. Continue to remember Allah, to ask Him to guide you, to ask Him to give you what you want. Keep asking Him, for indeed He has heard you. He will give it to you. He knows when it's right to give you, the right timing. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will definitely give you. So Adam alayhi salam turned to Allah, his wife Eve or Hawa alayhi salam turned to Allah. Allah forgave them, Allah blessed them, Allah granted them. They are our father and mother as humankind. So we definitely need to learn a lesson from what happened to them. They were cheated by the devil. Don't let the devil cheat you. The devil cheated them by saying, if you're going to eat from here, if you're going to consume what Allah made prohibited, you will achieve goodness. They didn't. So the same applies when Allah's prohibited the consumption of something in our lives right now. Sometimes some people might come to us and tell us, do you know what? Or shaitan will whisper and say, you're going to achieve goodness by this or by that. You will never achieve goodness 
by consuming that which Allah has prohibited. Just remember that. And I'd like to move on to something else. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has instructed us saying, O children of Adam, O children of Adam, don't let shaitan uh, deceive you like he deceived your forefathers. That's one. But another one is, O children of Adam, when you are going to the places of worship, take pride in your dress code. Subhanallah. What an amazing verse. You want contentment when you are standing in front of Allah? Look at how you're dressed. Ya bani Adam, khudu zinatakum inda kulli masjidin wa kulu wa shrabu wa la tusrifu innahu la yuhibbu al-musrifin. O children of Adam, take pride in your dress. Beautify yourselves when you are going to prostrate for the sake of Allah to the houses of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Beautify yourself, adorn yourself in a good way for the sake of Allah. Because when you've adorned yourself as you're about to pray, it means you've understood whom you are standing in front of. You're standing in front of the Lord of the worlds. Can't you take pride in your dress code? So the next time you get up for salah, the next time you're trying to achieve the pleasure of Allah through dhikr or whatever else it may be, look at yourself, look at your clothing and tell yourself, am I okay? Is this fine? Is this good? Have I adorned myself? You know what? If you haven't, try it. You'll achieve contentment. You'll achieve happiness. You go to the masjid looking prim and prop, smart, good. You will achieve contentment because you've realized who you're actually going to. You're going to Allah. If you were going to an ordinary human being, what would you do? Perhaps you want to look presentable. Many of us cannot even open the door if we don't look a specific way. Subhanallah, we ask Allah to grant us ease and contentment. So Allah says to us thereafter, the end of that verse, Kulu washrabu wa la tusrifu, eat and drink, don't be wasteful. For indeed, he doesn't like those who are wasteful. That's another point of achieving contentment, don't be wasteful. أقول قولي هذا وصلى الله وسلم وبارك على نبينا محمد الذين آمنوا وتطمئن قلوبهم بذكر الله ألا بذكر الله تطمئن القلوب